And the S&P 500 down more than 20 percent. This is the worst start of a year for the S&P since 1970. The market downturn has wiped out $3 trillion in value held in 401ks, IRAs, a huge setback for soon-to-be retirees. Experts say inflation, the war in Ukraine, and overall uncertainty in the economy are to blame. For more on this and to look ahead to the rest of the year, Professor Jeremy J. Siegel joins me now. He is a professor of finance at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. Professor Siegel, thanks for being here. So as we look back at how bad the markets were so far in 2022, what should we be looking for in the next six months ahead? I think the next six months are going to be better. Of course, you could say it can't be much worse um, uh, than what we had. But I think it's, it's mostly a result of the Fed having to tighten. It, it has done so very late, and as a result, it has to do so very aggressively. And, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a world of rising interest rates, uh, risk assets go down in price. That's just a basic proposition of finance. I think that we're close, that they won't be raising it that much more than the market expects. And once we get a signal, that they're near done raising it, I think the second half is going to be much better. That would be that would be a great relief to so many of us. As, as you said, it can't be much worse, but I'm thinking, well, it could be. And in part, the Federal Reserve is trying to stave that off by raising these interest rates multiple times, including last month, raising rates three quarters of a point. That's the first time they've done that since 1994. Do you think that the Fed's moves are having positive impacts on the economy? It sounds like you you think that that this is even though it's coming a little bit later maybe not too little too late well it's it's definitely working um i mean i i in, in the sense that uh, the housing market has cooled down dramatically commodities have cooled down you even oil is down i mean we can even see gasoline's down 12 13 cents a, a gallon right um so so we do see that of, of effect on inflation what we have to understand is in the, in the official statistics, uh, inflation is very lagged. We've had a lot of housing inflation. Uh, price of homes, rentals are up 20, 25% from pre-pandemic levels. When you look at the official statistics, they're still looking at six and seven. So we're gonna see this higher housing prices move through the official index, even though I think the housing market has pretty much hit its peak so far. So again, officially, we're going to still get a lot of inflation in the pipeline, but I really think what the Fed is doing is working. I had wished they had started earlier, so we, we wouldn't have suffered as much inflation as we did. But given what they've done, you know, they're, they're being aggressive and have, they've stopped inflation. Uh, but still, you mentioned you mentioned gas prices. They're down between 12 and 20 cents, depending on the market. However, they're still at, at, at historic highs. Same thing is true with the housing market. So tell us what markets are stronger right now that people should be keeping an eye on. Well, I think, first of all, what's still very strong is, is, is the labor market. Um, right. Uh, there's such a shortage and wages are still going up and employees really have, you know, they keep on complaining we don't have the workers, they need to raise wages and the, you know, a lot of people, you know, dropped out of labor force, they can be enticed back in um, and uh, by raising wages. So those goods and those services, particularly in the service sector that depend on, you know, wages and workers, those prices are still going to rise. So the only one of the major markets, if you think of the housing market, the commodity market, yes. um, even the freight market, that really is still extraordinarily tight is the labor market. We appreciate that so much. Professor Jeremy J. Siegel, thank you. Thank you. We are going to take a short break. Now is, of course, a good time to remind you that you can always stay up to date by downloading our CBS News app. Stay with us. You're streaming CBS News always on.